Monostring is an instrument of my own design that has a wood block between two rails and pulley from a screen door mounted here on the wood block. And as you slide the block back and forth, the pulley presses against the single string and that changes the pitch. Uh, alongside the string is the intonation from an F open to all the way down to a G sharp, about two octave range. I play with a pick. The two-string acoustic guitar is based on the design from the Hunter Judson book with a few modifications of my own. The neck, headstock, tailpiece are all carved from a single red oak board. The resonator here is cut from the bottom half of a bleach bottle. You can save the top part of the bleach bottle to cut it up into picks to play the instrument. I also use a metal sleeve from a hardware store to play the bottleneck style. The design of this instrument is based on an ancient African instrument, but with 21st century materials. An aluminum bow instead of a wooden bow. The resonator instead of a gourd cut in half is a bleach bottle. Accomplishes pretty much the same thing. Held against the stomach, and you, although it's a one single string instrument, you can get some variation in pitch by bending the bow as you play. It's still more or less a rhythm instrument, so you have to do most of your work with, with changing rhythms and that sort of thing. The three-string electric dulcimer of my design is based on the traditional Appalachian hollow body acoustic design, but mine is electric, amplified with this guitar pickup here, and it's not a hollow body, it's a solid pine base and a maple wood fretboard. It can be played two different ways, with pick and slide. and with mallets. This guitar I've got here was uh, built from a damaged bass guitar that I got in a flea market. I used the strings, the electric uh, machine heads uh, that I hand carved the neck out of maple wood and the body is made out of three pieces of poplar. The center piece is hollowed out so the electrics can be put, knobs and wiring from the pickups and everything can be put in the, in the inside. Uh, now, it, it's got two adapter here on each, one on each end, so you can put a strap around it and play it 
uh, on your neck and also on the back I put uh, two metal studs with uh, threaded studs with uh, wing nuts and uh, later I'll put a leg on that I made a steel leg on the back here so the bass can be played upright like a cello but first I'll play it like a rock guitar player would play it idea what it sounds like that way now I'll play it put the leg on it which will take a little bit of time and then so was the uh, the stand uh, an afterthought when you designed this huh it, it, it came later you built the guitar first and then you No, uh, I had this in, had mind in mind it from the very beginning okay. so yeah it was the very beginning okay now we put the leg on the back here so we're ready to get back playing bass standing up which you can play picking I designed and built the two-string bass with the strings a little bit higher off the neck than my four-string bass, and the reason was to make it easier to play with a bow. Uh, it also can be played with the fingers, and it can be upright, and it can be laid flat and played with mallets. Uh, it uses two Fender Precision pickups, and I hand carved the neck out of maple and running along the back is a metal brace that runs the whole length, keeps the neck from warping and it allows you to attach different length legs there so you can raise or lower the height. You can even play it standing up with the longest leg that I've got. Uh, I built this instrument in 2016 for a little under a hundred dollars and that includes all the electronic that was the majority was the pickups and the wiring and the tuning heads which are fender also and that was like sixty dollars the wood was almost nothing so i'll play with the fingers first <laughs> All of the instruments I've built were intended to be played in ensembles by myself and others. So I built this six string guitar for people not familiar with my other more esoteric instruments. The neck is carved from cherry wood. The body is cut from plywood with a saber saw. And the pickup is a DiMarzio Telecaster type and the various hardware is a collection of home-built and store-bought parts. As you might imagine, it can be played a variety of different ways and with any number of different effects units. <laughs>
36 string zither is based on centuries old design, but mine is different in that it has six DiMarzio pickups here for amplification. And it also has aluminum tube legs that are detachable. So you can take them loose and it makes transportation a lot easier. Uh, it can be tuned any number of different ways. Uh, currently it's tuned in groups of three and that way the bottom string isn't too loose and the top string isn't too tight. Uh, it can be played any number of different ways uh, with a pick. Almost harp-like effect. Or slide. slide and you can play with mallets things across it, chains, sticks, bounce things off it. Any number of different ways to be played. And because it is electric, obviously you can use any number of different effects units, delay, echo, reverb, distortion, that sort of thing and get a lot, of, a lot more variety of the sound that way. This instrument is in concept and appearance similar to the instrument of the same name built by Harry Parch. The concept is to combine three materials into one. Wood, glass and finally metal okay and the triangular shaped resonating box here is uh, where you, where the marimba like blocks are suspended above and it goes from D uh, below middle C to C above middle C. And uh, the six bottles back here behind the resonating cabinet uh, are wine bottles. And Harry Parch used two rows of 18 bottles. So this is a little scaled down version for apartment use. Finally, over here in the metal, uh, Harry Parch used three metal objects, two automobile hubcaps and one cooking lid pot cover. And I used the home built symbol and some other metal objects here, saw blades, to take the place of his metal objects. Okay, now I'll do all the three instruments together. <laughs> I redesigned this instrument recently to make improvements and because somehow the original was lost over the last 25 years, these instruments, uh, I don't know what happens to them. I lend them to somebody, they come and they go. But anyway, I needed to redesign it anyway. And what I did is it was a foot operated and I made it hand operated. And the principle behind it is 
that these partially filled bottles with water in them, as you tilt them, the pitch changes. So that's the whole idea behind having this lever here, handle that rotates the bottles. And this is what they sound like. PVC rack is another instrument from the Bannock Scoville book, but about one half of the size of theirs. Uh, I did that so it would be better to fit into an apartment. <laughs> the eight PVC pipes that you see here in the back are 45 inches above the ground, and they're the playing height. And then they go down to eight 180 degree elbows in plumbing, they're called a PVC P-trap, and then the, they come back up, but the lengths are different when they come back up, the non-playing side, and that difference in, in the height, obviously the shorter it is, uh, the higher the pitch, and the, the longer it is, the lower the pitch. And you have, starting down here, you have a C, uh, D, E, F, G, A, B, and up to C, more or less. The intonation is a little bit. Uh, they can be played two ways. You can play them, or maybe more. I just know of two ways. Uh, they can be played with the hands. Or uh, with uh, ping pong-like paddles. Uh, these paddles are felt covered. This instrument is based on design from the Bannock Scoville book and my version uses 14 aluminum tubes from F1 octave below middle C up to 1E, one octave above middle C. Uh, the tubes drilled at the nodes, which is 22% in from the total length of the tube. And that node is the point of least vibration. So if you attach it at that point, the tube will have the chance to resonate properly and fully. Uh, the resonators below this frame here are PVC, uh, two inch diameter, and they're capped on the end, and they're staggered so that uh, they'll allow them to be positioned close together. That's a very nice, pleasant sound, very long sustain. The steel tube marimba of my own design incorporates ideas both from the aluminum tube marimba and Parch's triangular shaped resonating cabinet used on the Zymux cell. I used steel electrical conduit because although it doesn't have the sustain time of aluminum tubes, it's so much easier to find and a lot less expensive. The triangular cabinet is easier to construct and takes less time, and it also, being more sturdy, transports so much better than the uh, PVC resonators on the aluminum marimba. <laughs> Thank you.
This instrument I call a glass rack. It's a sim simplified combination of two instruments by Harry Parch. On my version, the upper glass objects here are similar in sound to Parch's cloud chamber bowls, although they're obviously much smaller, don't sound quite as nice, they're a lot less expensive. The lower glass objects, these five down here, are similar in sound again to what Parch called the Mazda marimba. It gives a very uh, kind of like almost a sound of a percolating coffee. They're very fragile and you have to use very soft, lightweight styrofoam mallets that I made with uh, one covering of felt. And now I'll play the top section. The two thumb pianos that you see here are based on ancient African designs, but using 21st century materials. The smaller one, a mabira, as it's called, uh, uses rake tines cut to different lengths, different pitches. And the larger one, a ron, uses hacksaw blades that are broken off in a vise to different lengths, again for different pitches. Uh, Handheld versions that you're common in, in music stores are obviously much smaller and you hold them in your hand and you play them with your thumbs. Uh, you don't get a lot of volume that way, so I usually play these with cork tip mallets and I get much more volume. Here we have four plastic trash cans mounted upside down on cymbal stands for use as tom-toms. And this small trash can back here was modified to become a snare drum by adding this snare strainer here, which you can throw off or on. And underneath here, I cut down a 12 inch long set of strand wires and re-epoxied the other end. And this is what it sounds like with the snare off. No, with the snare on, sorry. And now the snare off. A little bit less of a snare sound there. Okay. And this will give you an idea what all the five drums sound like together. You can also play the rims out here as well as the centers of the drums. Here are a collection of metal objects, plates, ashtray, lid for a frying french fries, various serving plate, metal hole cutting saws down here. And the smaller ones I, I use as symbols and to add some sustained time I drilled holes around them and installed rivets which are which rattle like a sizzle symbol when you hit them. 
And these two, I, uh, they left them basically alone other than mounting them and used them as gongs. Uh, so I'll just give you an idea of what the various things sound like, starting with the ashtray. And you can put the stick in here and go back and forth. And this metal object down here, the cymbals. And one gong. And this gong over here, which is more sustained time. quietly we saw now the cymbals and the previous uh, can Thompson snare drum were designed to play all together so uh, we'll take a little break and then we'll come back and play both the Tom snare and cymbals all together okay as promised now we've got all the drums and the cymbals together and gongs The maracas I used here are plastic bottles filled with rice and very little is needed. You just barely need to cover the bottom of these things. The plastic bottles I think were barbecue sauce or something. I poured it out, put the rice in it when they were dry, put caps back on them. And I liked them because they had nice little handles on them and they look almost like a maraca. Next, we have what I call the mega maracas. You could also, they're, they're similar to a Latin percussion instrument called a shaker. And they're basically the same thing as the other maracas. They're just a larger, lower pitched bottle with, like I said, very, very little amount of rice down in the bottom. But you have, because of their size, you have a lot more volume. third instrument, uh, been around for years, another Latin percussion instrument, and I'm not really sure how you pronounce it. I think it's pronounced guro. I'm not sure. But uh, again, it's the PVC, two inch, sealed at the back. Use, uh, normally the, the Latin versions are made out of wood, but they have slits cut on the top, and I did the same thing on the PVC. I cut the slits with a hacksaw. And then you take uh, the scraper and run it back and forth. First time I ever heard uh, the instrument played was on a 1969 song by the Rolling Stones called Gimme Shelter. You can also run it through effects pedals like delay and reverb and uh, put a mic right here on this end and get a really incredible strange sound, almost like a growling animal. The last instrument we have here is a tambourine and it's using this hoop from, I got in a craft store and women use it for embroidery. They put cloth in there 
and I put wires and attach sleigh bells and you buy them in bags at the same store, very inexpensive. So you may say, well, you can buy a tambourine for $10. Well, you can make this one for about $2, maybe three, four tops. And everybody knows what it sounds like. This is a PVC recorder that I built, and the mouthpiece is from a $1 kid's toy. Uh, they talk about it being a flute, but it's actually a recorder, it's a more proper name. Attached is a one foot length of PVC, three quarter inch diameter, and I drilled holes for different notes. Now the spacing is up to you. You might experiment a little bit, Nothing wrong with that. I designed this instrument, which is a combination of a PVC recorder here and a sliding pitch instrument using a metal tube with a wood dowel that slides in and out. It gives a glissando effect like a trombone. And this is uh, just the PVC by itself. And now this is just the slide by itself. And you've got a, quite a good range and if you use all of the range it has a kind of comical effect. But what I do, playing them both together, is to use just a little bit of slide in and out, sliding above and below the pitch of the PVC recorder, and that those pitches sliding back and forth like that create, I think, a very eerie effect. This is a PVC pan pipe, six different lengths of one inch diameter. PVC held together by wood clamps. Different lengths PVC are in clo uh, closed off at the bottom and you blow across the top. It's based on an ancient instrument uh, played both in Greece, South America, probably China also. I have ascending six notes from the longest tube D E, F, G, A, B, up to the shortest tube. You can get a student clarinet mouthpiece for $20, $25 new, maybe less on the internet. And I took a length of PVC pipe and added drilled holes. Uh, hole placement is up to you. Probably experiment, be the best thing. And a piece of PVC here to uh, add, add it at the top for an adapter between the main part of the PVC clarinet and the clarinet mouthpiece. Uh, this piece on the end may or may not do anything, maybe help project the sound a little bit. So for a total of, I don't know, maybe $30 or less, 
you can get an instrument that, uh, although it doesn't have a lot of range, it because uh, it doesn't have the pads like it, in the spring-loaded levers like a real clarinet, but it costs a lot less. As with the PVC clarinet, you can build a very inexpensive, easy to play instrument with parts from a hardware store. Mouthpiece, $20 on the internet. PVC, total, I guess all these pieces together, maybe oh, a couple dollars. Cut the holes where you want them, get the sound that you want. Somewhat limited in range, like the clarinet, Lots of volume, for sure, and some really pretty abrasive sounds.
Thank you.